What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this beautiful Tuesday. Tuesday evening, October 19th, 2021. It's about 6.30 p.m. California time. A little bit of earthquake activity to talk about out here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Also some movement around the La Palma area. Volcano. Um, definitely picking up in the, some activity, including a 4.8 earthquake. Uh, that you can see on the uh, EMSC model here, near uh, the Canary Islands, La Palma Volcano, 4.8. Kind of rocking things a little bit. Here's some earthquake activity over the last uh, couple hours or so. You can see that 4.8 striking uh, at the volcano, Canary Islands, the Spain region, about uh, 39 kilometers or so for that earthquake, 4.8, uh, indicated a uh, potential further um, magma uh, intrusion there uh, it's been erupting for quite a while now and uh, looks like that's going to continue if not maybe possibly give it a further boost uh, in the way of eruption goes so got to pay attention to what's going on down below 39 kilometers pretty deep um, and the 4.8 magnitude at that uh, is a pretty large earthquake uh, for that region so things ramping up there at the volcano in the canary islands you can see some uh, further movement on the smaller scale, at least on the magnitudes. Looks like quite a few twos and threes kicking off in that area. But uh, 4.8 so far, a uh, pretty large uh, earthquake in that vicinity of the uh, Canary Islands. So kind of keeping an eye on that pretty closely, folks. I wanted to bring up a uh, image of the magma, if you will, of the volcano in the uh, Canary Islands area. This kind of shows you the... Uh, general movement of the uh, flow towards the ocean. You can see over here the volcano. It says Vulcan. And uh, kind of stretching its way towards the west. And that's uh, been uh, creating a lot of havoc over there. Still kind of keeping an eye on it. You know, the uh, potential for a, a much larger eruption, of course, is always there. Depending on what's going on below. Uh, if we continue to see those larger quakes kick, kick up uh, in that area. It's a good indicator of a potential further explosive eruption. Uh, so kind of watching that pretty closely, folks. Here's the latest USGS map. These guys are not reporting that activity uh, for whatever reason. I don't understand. I, I don't really know why, but uh, they're not. They just, uh, even though it's a 4.8 earthquake, they don't have it up here on the map for whatever reason. Uh, they do have some further activity uh, to chat about over here around the Japan region. Kind of seen a swarm of activity confined to this region of the Japan Trench. A couple fours and a 5.1 earlier throughout the day. Uh, some deep movement into the trench area just north of Tokyo. And also some activity up here along the Aleutian Trench. This one kicking up the latest uh, earthquake along the Pacific Ring of Fire. 4.9 Rat Islands, Aleutian Islands. Uh, 10 kilometers for that earthquake into this region. Also some deep earthquake activity once again around the Fiji Islands area and the Samoa area. 4.1 to the northeast of Fiji striking at 397.9 kilometers for that earthquake. Further down south, New Zealand getting in on some action as well. Just south of New Zealand, 4.7 near Riverton, New Zealand. Somewhat deep in this area, 14.5 kilometers. Kind of a uh, interesting earthquake there. I'm not for sure exactly if uh, any folks felt it, but it is in a region where there's uh, some seismic activity historically. You can see quite a bit of activity stretching there uh, just south of the New Zealand area, to southward. Earthquake activity can be deep up towards the New Zealand area, but most of the activity here in this region where the epicenter struck today uh, shallow earthquakes, but uh, looking at the scale here, we can get some larger earthquakes in this region. 6.0 to 7.0, it looks like, uh, possibly bigger. So we've got to pay attention to what's going on out there as well, around the New Zealand area. Uh, there's a movement, a little bit of movement in the Mediterranean Sea area. This one struck late last night, 5.9. Originally, it was all over the place. Uh, EMSC had a 6.6 .6 and 6.3, 6.2. Looks like it settled with the USGS as a 5.9 earthquake at 41 kilometers below the surface. Another hot spot of activity today. Some swarming kicking up into the Puerto Rico area around the Puerto Rico Trench once again. Right smack dab up in this area. 
and also some movement in the typical area where we see quite a bit of uh, swarming in uh, the past few months and years. But this activity up here kind of kicking up around the uh, subduction zone, the trench area, Puerto Rico trench region, some of this earthquake activity somewhat deep, 3.4, 30 kilometers in the area of the uh, Puerto Rico region. West coast, lighten up a little bit. Southern California seems like south, or at least San Francisco southward seems to be the hot spot of activity. Not a whole lot going on up here in the Pacific Northwest at the moment. Uh, seen some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault and a little earthquake around the Salinas area, 1.6 near, uh, uh, what is that, Carmel Valley Village, 8.4 kilometers. Uh, some further activity around the Mono Lake region, this activity right here. We're kind of watching, just kind of uh, been keeping an eye on this here for the... Uh, past month or so they have been seeing some swarming in this region around the Mono Lake of course uh, some volcanic activity uh, in that region historically and uh, no doubt in the future it will be as well including down south here where we're seeing a uh, uh, let's get rid of some of those a uh, little bit of activity around the uh, here we go a little bit further south there we go around the Coso range Coso volcanic fields I'm sure you guys can hear my bird in the background. He's just parting it up, parting it up on a Tuesday night. Okay. Uh, he's about the only one that's doing all that partying, not me. Um, so there's uh, some earthquake activity around the Coso Range. Like I mentioned, some volcanic fields out here in this area of Southern California. The activity is striking at about, looks like five to three to five kilometers for some of these earthquakes getting uh, up there around the magnitudes, 2.8 largest in this little cluster so far. You can see uh, over the last week, 2.5 and above, we did have that 4.0 in the same region as this 2.8 that struck here within the last hour. So activity uh, still kind of ramping up, keeping an eye on the west coast and the uh, volcanoes down in Southern California. Uh, Ridgecrest area, very, see this is kind of interesting here. Look at this, look at this movement in the Ridgecrest area. This is almost absent of earthquake activity. Normally we see a line of movement here in this region from uh well a couple of years ago when they had the uh the larger earthquakes down here july 4th july 5th 2019 i believe it was is the uh the date was it 2019 i believe it was 2019 um years has been flying by it's been crazy but uh yeah it's it's pretty absent right now as far as activity goes in this region uh but we are seeing that pressure up here and uh, not 100% certain this isn't uh, uh, that this this may be volcanic in a way. Looking at seven days, it's kind of confined to this region as well. I'm sure there's some fault systems out here mapped, but it is right smack dab around the coast of volcanic range, volcanic field, and uh, it's just kind of kind of playing it by ear, seeing what happens out here. Just kind of a hot spot of activity in that region while Ridgecrest calms down. Uh, Southern California around the San Jacinto Fault area, we've seen a little earthquake activity as well. A little swarm with a 2.8 in the vicinity of the San Jacinto Fault area around Baldy Mountain, just east of there. A little swarm of activity kicking up in the Southern Cal. Really no movement into the Salton Sea area. Things look pretty bleak and calm down there. But a um, little movement up here in this region kind of watching as well. Pacific Northwest, as I mentioned, pretty quiet. Did see some uh, movement around the uh, Canada area, 2.5 up there, and also some movement outside of Seattle, McMurray, 1.2 uh, earthquake strike in, in that region. Idaho, a little bit of activity around the Sawtooth Fault System northward into the Salmon River Mountains. Also uh, some activity around Hebgen Lake. Nothing really to report in the Yellowstone area far as the USGS goes. Of course, they kind of bounce back and forth and sometimes don't even mention anything. Looks like a little earthquake activity around Maple Creek. Some movement showing up on the seismographs here. A couple small microquakes. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to report. Not for sure what this is here in this region. Um, it's kind of odd looking. I can't really say exactly what it is. It's not really showing up on any of the seismograph stations uh, anywhere else. So I uh, can't, uh, can't be sure this is not just, uh, it, might, it might just be interference in that area of, of Yellowstone National Park. The trimmer map here in the Pacific Northwest, what a dramatic drop down, right? 
compared to the past three to four weeks where we've seen, actually it's been ongoing for about a month now, uh, of trimmer activity up and down the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, it has died out and diminished and kind of just migrated up here towards Vancouver Island area with only 82 epicenters along the Cascadia on the northern end of the subduction zone. 82 trimmers in this region, so pretty quiet uh, for right now in the uh, vicinity of the Cascadia subduction zone. I can't say if it's a good one, a good sign or a bad sign. You know, I guess we'll see when the big one does hit. We'll, we'll have historical data and whatnot to look at prior to the next uh, mega quake here in the Pacific Northwest. Just kind of, uh, who knows, we may see it in our lifetime and we may not. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards we may. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it. Um, you know, just... Uh, Enjoying this beautiful Tuesday evening. Got quite a bit of rain coming into California over the next seven days. Looking between five to seven inches of rainfall where I live here in the Sacramento Valley of California. Along the Coast Range, Crescent City, Eureka. Those guys could pick up double that. Um, or maybe upwards around eight to ten inches, I believe, um, from all these storm systems that are kicking up. And that are going to be heading our way, um, well, starting tonight. We've got rain coming in tonight. It's supposed to last for uh, about seven days or so. So me being a weather guy, I am super happy about the rainfall. We need it. We need it very badly here in Northern California. So, all right, guys, um, have a good day. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there and, uh, you know, always be prepared. And um, have a good night, guys. Catch you, catch you a little bit later. Peace out.